Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about RetroArch, Dead Space, Saints Row, CD Projekt, and more. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about RetroArch, and we talked about RetroArch yesterday with version 1.11.0. Today we've got version 1.11.1, and this is mainly just a bug fix release. So this new version of RetroArch introduces five different bug fixes in total, and if you're already on to version 1.11.0, I do recommend updating to version 1.11.1. At this point in time, I don't think this quick update will break anything for you. Next up, we're talking about Dead Space, and there's a brand new Dead Space remake set to release in January of next year, January 27th, 2023 to be specific. It's coming out for PlayStation, Xbox, and PC, and pre-orders just went up. In fact, Limited Run Games has a Dead Space Collector's Edition, and although it looks cool, this one will set you back quite a bit. So the retail price of the Dead Space remake, just the game, is set to be about 70 bucks USD, but for the Collector's Edition, it's going to set you back 275 bucks basically $205 more expensive than the game itself. Now, as much as I like collectibles and video game stuff, this price seems a little bit high. I can't justify paying 205 bucks over the base game for what's included. I might be off base though. Maybe if you're a massive Dead Space fan, this seems worth it to you, but let me know your thoughts about it in the comments below. Moving on, and we're talking about Saints Row, specifically the 2006 version of the game, and a whole bunch of alpha and beta unseen footage has just been released. If you are a Saints Row fan, or if you're just curious about this stuff, all of the information is posted up at the Internet Archive. I'll drop a link to it in the description below. There's a total of 30 gigs of information here, both alpha and beta unseen content. And speaking about unseen content, next up we're talking about Breath of Fire 4, the uncensored version up at romhacking.net. This ROM hack was just released. I'll drop a link to the romhacking.net page in the description below. This hack is for the PSX and it restores four scenes that were cut from the English versions of the game. Next up, we're talking about browser-based emulation with Afterplay. Afterplay has free and paid versions. The free version supports Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, and Super Nintendo. There is a brand new update to Afterplay in the works. It hasn't released just yet, but will be releasing pretty soon, and they will be getting rid of code based cheats in favor of cheats from the cheats database. These cheats will be toggleable. They'll be simple and straightforward and much more preferable over code-based cheats. Next up, we're talking about CD Projekt Red, the folks behind Cyberpunk, and they dropped a whole bunch of news today about upcoming games. The first one is Project Hadar, which we don't really know a whole lot about other than it's a third entirely distinct IP. On top of that, they let us know they're making a sequel to Cyberpunk with the code name of Orion. And they're also making a brand new Witcher game with the code name of Polaris. While I'd argue that this is pretty interesting on its own, they say here that they aim to release two more Witcher games after Polaris, creating a new AAA RPG trilogy. In addition to that, there's another Witcher game in the works with the code name of Canis Majoris, or Majoris, depending on how you want to pronounce that one and it's being worked on by an external studio. And in addition to all of that, there's yet another Witcher game in development with a codename of Sirius, and it's being developed by Molasses Flood. Are you serious, Project Red? This is a ton of stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong here. I'm excited about these announcements, but I'm also a little bit concerned they might be stretching themselves just a little bit too thin. Maybe they're trying to compensate and make up some money for the train wreck that was the Cyberpunk launch. But at the same time here, they did turn around that game, so I'm not quite sure what to think. Let me know your thoughts about all of these announcements in the comments below. And last but definitely not least, we're talking about Retro Game Core, and Russ from Retro Game Core has started a brand new charity store over on eBay. The store contains stuff Russ previously reviewed on the channel, and 50% of the proceeds are going to charity. I'll drop a link to the announcement video in the description below, and I do recommend checking it out if you're into stuff like this. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point. All stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts about anything we talked about today in the comments below, and we did talk about quite a bit. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.